Hello, lovely podcast people. Welcome to another episode of Not Another Nutrition Podcast. This episode is kind of a listener prompted episode. And I'm going to talk to you about choosing mm, the mentality, maybe more than the actual kind of calculation side, of choosing an appropriate calorie deficit. I get questions often that are around, you know, how many calories should I reduce my intake by, f you know, for fat loss? How, you know, at, you know, how many calories do you have to reduce? This is a funny one. Before you start losing fat, you know, it's like, if you spend one P, has your bank account gone down by, or is it the same? No, you've lost one pence. That pence is your fat. But yeah, so questions around that, you know, what percentage deficit should I use? Blah, blah, blah. Um, so I'm going to just talk about this quickly. Uh, before I do so, you may or may not know that I have officially committed to speaking at Mac Nutrition Live on the 27th of November. I have decided to take the slot of the international speaker that we unfortunately lost. And uh, yeah, I... I'm kind of 90% sure I'm going to do something, 98.5% sure I'm going to do something about the update on the current evidence, the current science on rapid fat loss. And um, because I talk about it a lot on podcasts and I get so many questions, but being able to actually present it with the data, you know, being able to walk people through some of it is easier than just, you know, like a podcast. I don't know if any of you sit there with a pen and paper. I very much doubt it. So it will be an opportunity to kind of walk people through it and then also tie it up with some very practical um, things with regards to when to start, how to come out the other end of it, and uh, you know how to set it up and set it up exactly based on your starting point and goals. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, it'll be fun. Uh, I've already started thinking about that a bit. Uh, because long term I'm also in um, I had a chat with my staff about doing a bit of an epic calculator rapid fat loss calculator that a, a very simple version is available after my um, uh, podcast with Steve Hall on rapid fat loss but a much more complex version that might go along with uh, a bit more of a, what's the word? N sort of narration of events in terms of how to use it, not just like, here's a calculator, plug your numbers in, more of a, you know, the, the mentality around it. Maybe it's something that I would give alongside the, the talk, because it almost certainly will film my rapid fat loss talk about Nutrition Live. Anyway, um, I just want to say, as a not a new not another nutrition podcast listener. I wanted to say, you're the type of people who I would love to come and hear the talks at Matt Nutrition Live. And um, because, again, if you enjoy this stuff, it's going to be a great conference. We've obviously got these three amazing talks that I've already widely publicized on intuitive eating, where intuitive eating meets intentional weight loss that's going to be such a cool talk and there's I, I feel like there's some really good the, these kind of three talks are almost an amazing setup for my talk on rapid fat loss I don't know if I will be the final one of the day but um, if that is the case a perfect setup uh, discussions around that discussions around intuitive eating where it properly fits into things who should be using it when how intentional weight loss when that can be a thing um, then we've got the one on uh, moving towards helping clients and ourselves move towards body acceptance, which again just really feeds into my topic of rapid fat loss because I'm always, I'm not someone who really, you know, I know people are going to take things out of context. I know people are just going to be throw shade on stuff and hateful for no reason. Um, uh, and I don't really care, but I also always want to do right by the people I, who want to be helped by me. And so making sure that I set them up well for the take home um, information. So again, this like, there, there's this discussion around body acceptance and, you know, not being in a place of self-sabotage, dieting for the right reasons, you know, quote unquote, whatever that may be. 
And then also this other talk on binge eating, how we can help ourselves or our clients uh, with binge eating, not, you know, like clinical binge eating disorder, but the spectrum that is binge eating and these um, occurrences that happen from in a, like a non-clinical uh, up to, you know, the spectrum of up to the clinical perspective. Uh, we've got a really cool psychotherapist talking on that. And then my talk. So anyway, my point is, in the description of this podcast, I'm going to put a link. And if you click that link, pop your email address in, I will email you a coupon code for £80 off the full price ticket, which is like, I don't know, it's probably four, yeah, 40% off. Anyway, we'd love to see you there. Um, they're just a little plug from that perspective, but also just, it's, you know, you guys say such nice things about the podcast. You say you love listening to me talk. These other speakers are amazing. It'd be cool to meet you face to face, have a selfie or whatever, uh, or a hug. Can you do that now? Um, anyway, onto this topic of choosing the appropriate calorie deficit. The thing I want to say off the bat is this is why I'm so passionate and pro education because so many people are out there looking, you know, hey, you know, so and so influencer, what deficit should I use? And you know, there's, there's this sort of arrogant influencer who's just like, this percentage, this is what I use with all my clients. Like, ugh, bleh, sick. What a ridiculous, like, I use this for all my clients. My goodness. Um, you know, versus this is what I start off with in my head as a starting point and maybe adapt from there, that's not so bad. But it's very different for different people. You can't just pluck a number out of the air, which is why, you know, a layperson's course, when we launched that with the, the foundation course and the weight loss bolt-on, it the whole point of that is designed to empower people to be able to do this higher level thinking of, in my situation, not even just me as a human being, but my situation right now and what's come before and what's coming in the future, what is my best course of action and how can I adapt that based on, right, I'm three days in, this has happened and what's the best course of action here, etc. You know, that place of understanding also just is going to help with the uh, adherence, sticking to it. When people have high levels of things like self-efficacy, um, and perceived behavioral control, these th this other realm. I'm not sure if I've ever to spoken about these on the podcast, but you know we see better levels of adherence to programs when someone has a higher perception of being able to control the behaviors that are at hand and this self-efficacy. Like if you are of that feeling, you're going to be able to see stuff through and you're going, you know, when things get tough or uh, hard sticking with it, you're not going to have this kind of lacking of confidence. Is this working? Am I doing the right thing? It just builds into this whole process. So anyway, with regards to a calorie deficit, I'm afraid if you've come to this podcast looking for an exact answer, you're not going to get one. Um, and people are asking like, what, what percentage shall I cut from the calories? And literally, this is the correct, blunt answer to that question. Anything from 1% to 100% deficit. Now, no one's giving any time scale. Like, okay, but per day. Well, how long do you intend to diet for? How many days of diet have you got? This is why having a, a calculator like the one I want to create allows people a bit more understanding of what's the mathematical situation of fat loss that we're discussing here. And I'll give you an example, actually. I w was messing about with my own calculator. And um, so I'm doing, I'm sort of in a, two days into, <laughs> what's the, uh, the uh, change? Why can't I think of it? Change. Oh, my goodness. My goodness, complete mind blank. Anyway, you know, steps to change. My, why can't I think of it? I'm going to have to get Lucy to delete this bit out. Ah, yes, the readiness to change continuum. So uh, in this situation of uh, I'm two days in with my readiness to change isn't quite there. I'm um, starting to make a few, 
you know, if someone's taking up running, it's like, I'm ready to exchange. Or I'm, I've bought the running shoes. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm, and I'm going to do actually a podcast on the eat as little as you can realistically maintain diet. And so in that scenario, I'm just kind of just dipping my toe in on the first couple of days. I wasn't feeling too good, been a bit busy. And, um, but it's actually just a really nice stepwise way of me getting into my rapid fat loss phase of where I'm gonna be consuming anywhere from, say, 900, 1,000 to 1,600 calories. Um, but in this instance, I'm messing around with these numbers, right? And if you look at, if you take my body weight and my body fat percentage, and you look at, you know, what uh, my rough, uh, well, activity levels are and these kind of things, and you look at my dieting, and, and you look at what I've spoken about many, many, many times before on other podcasts, is this maximum rate of availability of fatty acids for oxidation. So the maximum rate that my body can go, look, here's, you know, it, it, put it in a coal, uh, a coal fire analogy. You've got a pile of coals, you've got your fire and uh, in your train, <laughs> and you're walking them back and forth. The fastest possible rate that you can get from the coal stack, is it a stack? The pleth plethora of coal the bale of coal, the <laughs> pile of coal, the uh, shoal of coal. Anyway, it's just funny that I called it a stack. The stack of coal, I'm going with it. The stack of coal to my coal burner. Oh, in my steam engine. Do steam engines use coal? I think they do. Why do I do this to myself? Um, so anyway, getting it from one to the other. The maximum rate that I can get that there, if as the train I am, um, I speed up, and we'll call this speeding up as in faster weight loss, right? If I speed the train up, I can, that you know, I quick, get more coal. There's there's a rate limiting there of like, just how quickly can I can get the coal there? So either, and if we call the speed of the train fat loss, the, the fat loss is just not going to, to speed up. I can't go any faster on my steam train if I don't have the coal to heat the water to make the steam that makes the wheels go round. I actually have no idea about the engineering or or process of how steam engines work. So I'm just going to hope that I'm on some sort of track or track, pun intended, not intended. Uh, <clears throat> my point being is you can't just there's this rate limiting thing, okay? So at that point in the human body, when I have no more coal, I start burning other stuff. My train analogy does not allow for my analogy to continue, <laughs> unfortunately, unless we start throwing people. I mean, that's extreme, why have I gone there? Uh, the, you know, the coal burner starts burning itself for energy. That, that's not bad. My point being is the body starts taking from other stores of energy, which is glycogen, muscle glycogen, which is carbohydrate, or muscle protein. And this is where protein and muscle loss occurs when people diet too fast. And you can stave this off. And my calculators, you know, my all singing, all dancing, is going to show you exactly how this is going on and how to, you know, uh, attenuate this loss in muscle mass, reduce this loss in muscle mass, or stop this loss in muscle mass, true loss in muscle mass. So, um, and in my scenario of my rapid fat loss, I did the calculations, and I can realistically, my rate is limited at somewhere around 900 grams of fat loss a week, which is nigh on a couple of pounds a week. That doesn't matter if I'm on 500 calories a day, 1,000 calories a day, 1,500 calories a day. Uh, I'm trying to think where I sit. But, you know, that's the maximum. It's zero calories a day. There you go. There's another example. That's the maximum amount of fat I'm going to lose. Above and beyond that, any extra calorie deficit that would be required, let me say, let's call it 1,000 calories because that makes it easier. I oh, know, I can probably work it out. Yeah, 6,930. Oh, 0.9 times 7,700. Someone go do that. See if I was right. 
oh, I tell you what, if that's right, let's do it slowly in our heads. My goodness, it is, isn't it? 6,930. That was rapid, was it not? Tell me, was it? I think it was. That was just in my head as I was talking. Bam, said the figure. Also, who was it? Um, oh, it was some MNU students. I, uh, in one of the MNU lectures, I do something like that. And I was so impressed with myself, a little bit like I was there. And they were like, well, he's delivering a lecture. Like, he's clearly learned that beforehand. I was like, do you really think I'm that sad that I would, I would do that to impress you? Like, I'm f way more impressive than just doing one maths sum. Uh, I mean, that would be ridiculous. I have seen this actually, some influencers like reading off scripts, like for their podcast or for live Q&As, reading off scripts, but, but clearly trying to show that they're not reading. Uh, I find that weird. Like no, nobody cares. Like no one's, no one's following you because you're Einstein or you're whatever Goodwill Hunting um, with some kind of photographic memory. Anyway, where, uh, where were we? In in this instance of my point nine, right? It's six. It's a deficit of six thousand nine hundred thirty. And so realistically, we're talking about a thousand calories a day deficit. That's what I need to do to maximally l lose fat at, fat at the maximal rate possible, combine a few words there, for me, right? So I simply cannot die any quicker. And when I just did plug that into the calculator, I was like, oh man, like I've got 11 days until I want to be particularly like a bit leaner visibly. And you just think, oh geez, like at, once you get to this, you know, I'm, I'm starting an okay level of leanness, things just slow down. And they have to slow down. And any trying, any trying to push the boat harder, you're just going to incur muscle loss. Whereas it's a very different scenario when you're you're starting at a much higher percentage of body fat, uh, or and a higher body weight, and, and all this that, and the other. You, the rate that you're able to bring these fat into the fatty acids into the bloodstream is much higher when you have more fat available. There's also other things that unfortunately the, the research, the literature hasn't given us any insight on. So, you know, anything like caffeine, for instance, which increase in li increases lipolysis. So maybe we can etch out a little extra, maybe, and things like that that we just don't understand um, yet. So going back to where do I put my deficit? There's just no answer to this question and you need to get yourself educated. Let me also say this, my calculator, the point of the calculator is, is that it's going to allow you to pick a preferential calorie intake. Now, for someone who has done an aggressive diet maybe four times before, I think, I know roughly around where my hunger dissipates. Don't know if that's really technically the correct word to use there, but disappears, goes away, massively reduces. And there are two or three reasons that I've discussed elsewhere of why that might be, but we'll focus on just the most obvious one, <clears throat> which is ketosis. And so when your calories go low enough, we get into ketosis and but because we're also dieting fast it's not like doing a ketogenic diet like the keto diet where you keep calories high and ketosis might take a bit longer and, and even actually if you look at the studies um rapid fat loss versus keto ketogenic diets that you know the rapid fat loss diets get do it way better but there are there are these other reasons i've discussed elsewhere which also just might make things a little bit easier. And so, but knowing this preferential intake, you then need to, if your preferential intake is lower, which it is for me, then you're kind of, what the calculator will tell you is the recommended, you then need to adjust things with things like refeeds um, to, like I said, stave off too much muscle loss. Now, let me just say at this point, muscle loss I've said elsewhere, you know, muscle loss is a bit of a boogeyman, bogeyman, whatever. 
it, it doesn't happen as much as people claim. Oh, I lost so much muscle. You didn't. You just had more body fat than you thought you did. You thought you were more jacked than you were. But secondly, regaining lost muscle mass is so easy. In fact, there's three elements to this. Measurement of muscle mass via a DEXA scanner will, will often show muscle loss when it really isn't their muscle loss. It's just reducing muscle volume through the reduction in carbohydrate, which has water and you know provides part of your muscle volume, muscle glycogen and it will show up as muscle loss and it's gone as soon as you add carbs back in, that you know fake muscle loss. But even real muscle loss, we can get that back. We know this like uh, muscle memory from injury when you get muscle loss related to that. So, and, and as well, how many of us are realistically caring about the absolute pinnacle of our physique? Uh, if you are dieting and you have a show date for a physique competition or bodybuilding competition, yes, it's a different question. You can still use these protocols, but it's a different question you're discussing there. But outside of that, if you're doing it for not competitive reasons, you're just doing it for yourself, losing a teeny bit of muscle is irrelevant. And um, so, and as I say, you can just gain it back anyway. So where do you put your deficit? just becomes this answer of where suits you and really do you have a good handle of what maintenance calories are for you i mean no one knows what maintenance calories are it i literally have to say this hi martin should i do maintenance calories are you know this is my situation blah 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 blah, blah. should i and i and i have to just respond what do you think maintenance calories are like what do you define as maintenance calories what are you where are you, th like, give me a marker in the ground of of how that relates to this scenario. Because people say maintenance, cal maintenance calories and they don't mean maintenance calories and it's annoying. In fact, that needs to be a podcast. In fact, that needs to be to my next podcast. What is maintenance calories? What is or what are? Hmm. What are maintenance? What is maintenance? There you go. So, you know, do you have a good handle on that? Where are you starting from? Are you starting from a hugely metabolically adapted standpoint? Um, you know, how, how nourished is your body? Like, it's a bit of a namby-pamby word, nourished, right? But just with everything we are learning about gut health, for instance, you know, this is why ketogenic diets tend to be rubbish because they last so long. In, you know, lots of people are like, oh, this is how I live now. And just the impact that has on the reduction in dietary variety. And I, I said previously, actually, I remember ages ago, I never did this. Jeez, it's probably on my notepad here somewhere about dietary fiber variety. And I said I'd do a podcast. I really should. Let me, like Lucy, you'll be editing this or whoever's ed editing it. Just bring this up with me. I need to do that one. Um, but it does impact that. And we know that there are super duper wide ranging effects that the gut microbiota has on us as a whole physiological organism, like in terms of your mental health, but also stuff related to fat loss and metabolism. So it's also just a thing of like, lots of people just need to flip and stop. You've been doing stupid stuff for so long. It's not your fault necessarily, but you found my podcast and just listen now. Just fip and eat well. Stop being a gimp. Stop dieting. Eat well. Get some consistency in your life. Get some dietary variety in your life. Start eating some pulses and legumes as I try to go on and on about every time I'm asked, like, what one nutrition tip would you give to people? And, f you know, the final point is, What's your mental state like around food? What's your what's your capacity to put yourself in a position of restriction? How stretched are you mentally right now? How do you have any real food triggers? Any even non-food triggers, but the, the food is the medication. How you're medicating, you know, based on this stress trigger or whatever it is. Do you need to go through a period that, you know, giving the game away a bit, but just intuitive eating-esque 
mentality of just really, really, really giving yourself un- unconditional permission to eat. I think I've spoken about that on previous podcasts if you want to look it up. If you don't know where these things are, actually, I might make it a point of saying this. Like, you can go on my website, use the search function of all the podcasts. Like, it's h- hard to search iTunes, right? But you can go on my website and search this stuff. Are you ready to, to undertake something like this? Because it is extreme restriction. But as I've said before, your perception of restriction dictates its impact. So there's no, you know, oh, I'm doing a 5% deficit. I'm doing a 40% deficit. I'm doing a 100% deficit, a fast. Oh, that's going to give people eating disorders. There's no evidence that that's the case, that the greater level of calorie restriction leads to a worsened or a uh, yeah a worsened position with, with regards to your relationship with food or uh, a worsened position with regards to di- you know your eating becoming disordered. You can give yourself or increase your risk of an eating disorder without any calorie restriction. That's maybe a big statement that people need to hear, a fact that people perhaps go, really, that doesn't sound right. I'm going to sit on that. I'm going to now go and think about and ponder orthorexia and how that comes about and daily weighing and and hyper-focus on body size and image, etc. You don't need to be counting calories to end up with a disordered way of eating or worse still eating disorder. So I just, yeah, this this podcast, I just wanted to get to this point of like, there's no right or wrong answer. And you need to like take it back to your grand, you know, the grandmother analogy of, you know, oh, I've put on a bit of fat. I want to lose a little bit. I'm just going to stop eating cakes between meals. Oh, look, I've done it. Now I'm going to add the cakes back in or whatever. And just maybe be a bit more mindful or what, you know, go do a few more walks. Simple, done. Um, like this scenario of like where exactly should I put my calorie deficit there isn't an answer to that question and if you can be consistent you'll find your sweet spot relatively quickly Um, and this is why it's important not to put yourself in a position where you're where you're just hating every day i've said this before if it's not like hell yes to starting a diet then it's sort of just a hell no it should be an enjoyable exciting endeavor because of the you know progress that you're going to make the way it's going to take you towards goal you're not doing you're not hating yourself into change sort of mentality um you know, if this is the first time you've listened to this podcast, go and listen to my earlier podcast on what foods can you eat during an aggressive fat loss phase and others that were around that time. Uh, I'm going to leave this there. I don't think there's anything more I particularly need to cover. Make sure you click the link in, in my bio if you do want to come to Matt Nutrition Live. Let me know if you have any questions. Again, always relating to this. I much prefer the questions on Facebook and Instagram posts, so do it as a public comment, please, rather than my DMs. But of course, if you have bigger questions that arise from it, go on my website, martin-mcdonald.com forward slash N-A-N-P for Not Another Nutrition Podcast. And there's like the little form that you can just fill in for like bigger questions that I check and helps me create podcasts for you. Right, until next time, and next time will be the maintenance one. What is maintenance? Or how do I know what my maintenance calories are? Um, Or what maintenance calories is for me? Hopefully enjoy that one. I'll get that done. Hope you're well. Much love.